Hello everyone and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan and thank you for coming to the channel. Okay everybody, as the headline suggests, I did what you're not supposed to do. I made an impulse purchase of fish. I didn't really have a place to house them, at least not appropriately, and I did it anyway. And I did it at a Petco, at a big box store. I bought these two magnificent juvenile angel fish Look at the red top on the finnage of this beautiful long fin scolare, classic angelfish. Look at the red hues, the yellow on the dorsal uh, tendrils. It's just a magnificent creature. And it was at Petco. And this marble, the perfect finnage, forming that awesome arrowhead shape. And these are just tiny little critters. There was about eight or nine of them. They had just come in the other day and I bought them. I'm putting them in here. And just like uh, the super professional MD fish tanks over there in the United Kingdom, he too coincidentally bought two angelfish and had nowhere appropriate to put them. So he housed them in a, in a not quite a nano tank, but whatever, right above it, you know, a 20 gallon, maybe it was even smaller, to the, smaller than that for him. This is a 22 and a half gallon, the 60H by ADA. And I bought these two fish and, and put them in here and hope for the best, right? So like he said in his video, well, I'm going to rehome them later. And ostensibly I could do that as well and probably will have to, and that means they will be going into the uh, massive display tank, which already has a pretty significant population of fish, not, notwithstanding the three angelfish I have in there that uh, two are full grown and one is mostly, and they get along fine, and adding two more to a school of three to make five in some respects makes sense, but there's already so much fish in there, I don't know but it was an impulse purchase. I wasn't thinking rationally. It's arguably not the right thing to do. And I did it anyway. You know what? And you, I don't regret it. I look at these two creatures who are doing just fabulous in this tank. The other fish are keeping their distance, but I put some food on the top. They'll all come out and everybody's fine. That might be good for a month or two, but as these get bigger and God willing stay alive and thrive for me, I will uh, put them in the other tank. And what, what I'm trying to say is I did what I'm not supposed to do because this is a hobby, this is a passion, because I'm an addict, because I want what I want and I want it now, because I was taken by surprise at seeing these lovely specimens in a big box store because I have a fish room and there's always room for one more, right? There's always room on the boat for one more passenger. I mean, that's kind of the way your mind spirals when you're trying to justify making a purchase that you probably shouldn't, but I did anyway. And you know, it's a bit of a gamble for sure. Uh, a, that they will not uh, become too aggressive, especially with this other a uh, larger fish in the back. No, he's always in the back. This is my honey garami. And he's a shy and timid little love bug. And uh, that's how he behaves anyway. But still, if these angel fish uh, had a naughty streak or one of them did, it, they could start harassing him. Not too worried about the rasboras and the tetras and certainly not the uh, bottom feeders or anything else for that matter. And technically, there is space in this tank. I haven't put a new fish in here in some time, but if these triple in size, it's really not the right size uh, aquarium for fish such as these. But angelfish are my favorite freshwater tropical fish. Just all in all, from the exotic uh, fantasy bucket list Altum angels, right down to what might surprise you at a Petco or a PetSmart. I just think angelfish are, are the bomb. I love them. Now, it would be neat if they could stay essentially this size and be fabulous, but that's just not how Mother Nature works when it came to orchestrating this species. Um, 
they both can get quite sizable. And if I put them in a larger tank and feed them well and take care of them, they absolutely will. In my display tank, I essentially have a long fin, a veal tail of this variety, and it's giant monstrous. But it's a gentle giant, and I love, uh, I love, what is it, him? Yeah, it's a him. And uh, maybe this will be a her. And, you know, if I have two of my absolute favorite species in there, uh, in my favorite form, the veal tail with that beautiful plumage and some red on top, um, I'm obviously playing favorites here with this one, and uh, it, it is true. And I probably would have just bought the one, but I can't just buy one fish. I always, I mean, ever since I was a kid, I thought in terms of two or more. So even though angelfish has pairs, when you force them, you, you, that's really not advised either. So there's another thing I didn't, I did that wasn't advised. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you not so much to give you license to go ahead and do the same thing. Uh, it's not recommended, but you know, everything is a learning experience. I don't fear for these fishes lives or the inhabitants uh, that they're in there with. Uh, if a month or two from now there's some aggression, you know, I'll work with it. I'll make something happen where everybody wins. I didn't see what that is uh when i bought these two and i am culpable for that that is on me but having fun and you know buying i'm impulse like when you go into a flea market or a fish swap or a pet store it will trigger in a lot of us especially if you have a, a wiring like i do uh, an impulsivity uh tendency for addiction I, that's a whole other story but you know once you're triggered, it's pretty hard to get out of that tunnel vision into making your purchase. And if we have fish rooms or multiple tanks, we generally can get away with it. Uh, but I pulled a fast one here and I hope mother nature uh, doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. Speaking of things I do just for the sheer joy of it without really uh, thinking it through, let's switch over to this tank. I want to show you guys something. All right, you see these fun two little uh, decanters, if you will? They're sort of stick-on glass planters. They have a little hole at the bottom, so roots and, uh, you know, appropriate aeration, if that's the right word, can help uh, grow the plant. It's not just this small of a size uh, receptacle without a little... Uh, hole at the bottom and ultimately if I keep them in here and these plants grow uh, the roots will come right through just like if it were an avocado plant. So I have these in here in this beautiful uh, robust planted tank with the crowd pleasing long fin albino coriadoras and there's a uh, long fin placostomus actually. I haven't fed anybody so they're behaving kind of randomly. They They aren't frisky like when I usually film. But back to these two receptacles. Um, when I was trimming the tops of those stems in the back, uh, and in particular this Rotala Atra, I decided I didn't want to throw out the tops and I had nowhere else to put them. So I had planted about four or five in each of these. Now what you're looking at here are the bottoms uh, to that because I recently cut those off once they reached the surface of the water. And now another goofy impromptu experiment. I put them in this simple vase, had to raise it with a bucket to be close to a light source, which I actually put on here because I had the extra light, hung it on this fabulous rack system, which I recommend everybody who wants a fish room seriously consider because you can hang your lights from it, your tools, anything and everything and it's a super cool way uh, to run your fish room but you see how one thing leads to another so now i'm trying to grow some of this rotala h rot as well as another species in simple aqua soil with nothing but water and light on it and i don't have a plan uh, for that either i'm just doing it because I'm curious, because I'm fun, because I'm obsessive and compulsive, because I didn't want to throw plants away any more than I wanted 
uh, to not buy those two angel fish when I saw them. I make a decision in my head and I don't always think it through. I just say, I think it'd be cool if I put those plants in those little glass pots I bought on eBay like five months ago, and that's what I did. I think it would be awesome. I can't let someone else get these two fabulous fish for like $4.99 or whatever price they were in beautiful looking health. Oh, and by the way, here's another box I checked that uh, in terms of what not to do. I just acclimated these in standard operating procedure. I don't have a quarantine tank. Ah, I just don't, you know, if I had an extra tank, I would create an aquascape. So, uh, you know, living on the edge, Stefan at Lush and Salty Aquariums is living on the edge. I know it, um, I quasi apologize for it, but I know a lot of you do the same, you know, for everybody, who comments and says, you know, you were a bad boy, shame on you. I'm sure there's six or seven of you who will think just the opposite or at, at minimum will say, uh, if I, if I have, if I'm being honest, I kind of did the same thing too. I brought, I bought a, uh, I bought a group of Coriadoras, you know, I figured I could just put them in, in any tank because Corydoras are peaceful and I hardly ever see that species in Petco and I just had to have them, so I bought them. You know, that's the way our train of thought goes, you know, or or am I crazy? Am I the only one? Um, I know MD Fish Tanks, who's, you know, the top of the food chain when it comes to fish tubers. He bought two angel fish because he was just in love with them because they were among his favorite species. I think he said they were the first fish he ever spawned, which is pretty cool. And he had to have them and he didn't quite know what he was going to do with them. So he said, you know, the political, politically correct and probably true statement, I'll put them in the bigger tank when they get bigger, which is probably what I'm going to do. But if these grow twice the size and are super happy, and are doing really well in the aquarium, you know, maybe I'll leave them in here, 22 and a half gallons. And because it is a high, and angelfish prefer height to length, uh, it's possible I could get away with it, especially with so many, uh, so many plants and keeping it at the level that I like to think I keep it at, which is, you know, very, very good condition uh, for fish and livestock and plants and, and water parameters, et cetera, et cetera. But as you can see, you know, I'm thinking out loud in real time about what I may or may not do with these two fish. And is that part of the fun? I think so. Does it show a little recklessness and disregard? Probably. Am I gonna do it again? Definitely. It just falls into the hobby. Speak, you wanna use the word parameters? It falls into the hobby parameters if you're Stefan at Lush and Salty Aquariums. What about you guys? Uh, can you own up to an impulse purchase that you're only now reconciling yourself with on, on you know, what might be an outcome, what, what might happen? Uh, you know, I'm not thinking bad thoughts. I don't think nightmare scenar scenarios uh, when it comes to the hobby, I might do that in real life, you know, consequences and financial insecurity and, you know, somebody gets sick or somebody, you know, is hurt or there's a drama, you know, then I can go to a negative place. But in this hobby, even when I'm gambling and really even when things go bad, I don't get into the same sort of funk that I might get into in real life. I can be anxious and uh, sad or angry, but it's a different kind of anxious and sad and angry because I know um, it's going to be okay. I'm going to learn something. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm certainly going to provide those fish a better home than being in Petco water and in, in, in that store uh, for a few days. I know those fish would have gotten purchased, so I'm not going to kid myself and say, Oh, well, they would have just languished there. No, someone would have bought them. They're too awesome. Uh, but I know it's it, it's going to be okay. And I'd love to hear from you. You know, I am fishing, uh, pun intended, for some reaction and comment. But I am curious, 
and fascinated to see if the way I approach this hobby, a little bit of shoot from the hip, is the way you approach this hobby. All right, everybody, uh, thank you for indulging me. As always, keep your hands in the tank and ciao for now.